that we're going to learn um, today is, is a really useful one. Um, and I think one, if I'm being very honest, that there's going to be a duality in the class about people who feel like they can wrap their head around it and totally get its use. And like a group of people that are just going to be, you know, bonking their head and, and, and kind of cursing me for teaching it because it can be a bit confusing. So I'm going to try as best I can to walk through um, exactly what this tool is and why you would use it. And then hopefully it can be kind of built into your toolkit. Right now I'm looking at the land conservation, or apologies, the, uh, the conservation um, kind of need for birds, right? Where zero is like, nah, not necessarily that important. There's no significant habitat versus 10 is, is you know, the absolute most significant. And when I look at it, you know, from a macro perspective, I can, you know, certainly see similar trends um, spread throughout. But if I start to zoom in, you know, I can I can then start to identify, interestingly enough, that like, you know, this green and this green and this green and this green are similar because they're greens, but they're different because this green is here, right? This is a pocket of green land here that then is segmented from other green, right, other score of four by, you know, red or yellow. And so it's almost its own island. So it'd be really cool if what we could do is get a tool that would help us get that out, right? So moving from a map that lets us see, you know, all of the values of four together, or in the instance that I'm going to show you all of the values of like, you know, nine or 10, and actually sort of see them as individual contiguous blocks, right? So maybe have this giant sort of red area here report itself as one value because what this is in common is this is one giant long contiguous right touching span of pixels that share the same value and the tool in question is going to be something called region group so what i need you to do before we actually run the tool is if you're following on your computer is to open the attribute table and just select manually nine and 10. I want nine and 10 to be the two that we're looking at. You know, well, let's consider them for the purposes of this assignment. Let's call that most in need of conservation, right? Those are the lands that are most in need of conservation. Um, and, you know, so what we're gonna do then with the most in need of conservation is we're gonna come over to our toolkit analysis tools and under generalization, select region group. Drag it in. So it's only going to do it on the values of 9 or 10. And again, what region group is going to do is it's going to separate all of these values here into contiguous blocks and sort of give them each a value. Right. So what would happen is this little contiguous block here would come back maybe with a value of one, a meaningless value, all it's saying to us is that happens to be one contiguous touching block of extremely important like conservation area. This is another contiguous block. This is another contiguous block. Here's another even bigger, longer sort of contiguous block. So it's going to ask for one very, very important question here, and that's the number of neighbors to use. And the way you can think about this tool, and I'm just going to open my trusty PowerPoint for a second, sort of to give you like a quick demo, right? If we think about the way that raster cells are oriented in relationship to one another, you know, if this is me, I have, you know, a cell here, I have a cell here, I have a cell here, and I have a cell here, right? Those are my four main neighbors right around me. Notice... The first option is four. But I also have neighbors here. I have neighbors here. I have neighbors here. And I have a neighbor here. All right, maybe I'll give them a different value so we know that I'm kind of looking at them in a slightly different light as the others. All right, me, I'm in the middle, so I'll color myself up as orange so we know I'm separate. So again, the four that are around here, I touch them on one of my sides. I'm definitely, you know, linked and connected to them. But here, I'm touching by a corner. Now remember, the reason that this is an option is because when you move from vector to raster, 
right? You know, the world of vector might be like squiggles and really precise sort of, um, you know, kind of circles or, or like amorphous polygons, but in the world of raster, everything is rectangular. And so you may get an instance where two things are touching by their corner, but they really should be considered sort of connected because it's a digitization issue. So again, that's just up to you, right? If you consider things touching by the corner should still be considered neighbors, then absolutely do eight. If you don't, then do four. So we'll run it. It'll kind of do its thing. It's going to produce something that at first is going to seem like nonsense or it's going to try to stretch itself and the values might seem a little um, atypical but I'm going to play with symbology to sort of call it out in a more logical way um, in a second that makes sense. So I've never run this tool yet on um, Pro so I'm going to wait to see if this really seems like it's going to tick up at a slow volume. Probably stop the video here um, yeah, and then pick up right at the end so you don't have to watch through the whole thing. Up, um, with the tool having completed and the outcome it pits off is, is another one of those examples of ARC just picking the wrong symbology for this tool. Um, again, I will just continually reiterate, you are in charge of the symbologies. Don't just accept what is given to you. Try to play around with it to see if you can make it more unique, right? When we see this, our brains immediately think float and you know kind of the same as like a distance or an elevation where we couldn't see the attribute table where there's so many values um and you know it, it's going to think that way um you know just because there were some that were um slightly uh oops that's the wrong one that's why i'm looking so ridiculous hold on there's my zonal where am i looking where's my regional There it is. Whew. All right. Redo. Regional group, right? Came back to us looking like this. All the colors sort of look the same. This makes it look like it's a, um, like one of those linear grids that we couldn't access the attribute table, but I actually can, right? Each of these is a unique value, and I start to see that there's just a bunch of them, and then they sort of list, like, account. And one way to get a sense of what you're looking at is if I sort by descending, and then I sort of zoom out a little and maybe click on that one, right? It highlights this massive area here. And what this area has in common is that given that standard I set before, right? Must be a value of eight or nine. I had those selected. And then, you know, can touch any neighbor in an eight thing geography. What's in common about every single one of these pixels is that they're contiguous. They're all touching. You could walk from one end to another and never actually leave this giant block. It is in effect become its own region, right? That's sort of a raster term for when you separate things by contiguity. And so therefore, rather than look at them like this, I could come to symbology and say, you know, a unique value. Yep, I know there's a lot and it's okay. Just let it do its thing. Because when it produces the output, you'll see that what we have then generated and created is something more akin to exactly what we're looking at, where every sort of unique individual raster block here um, uh, will take on an individual and unique color to show sort of the contiguous, not touched by anything, but its, its immediate neighbor's region uh, of high conservation land. And just because I know this might take a quick second, this is another I'm going to stop the video um, and then we'll pick up when it starts.